my name's Mark Smith. I'm the resourcing specialist for the BBC um, and I work in the schemes team, which look after work experience, apprenticeship programs, traineeships, placements, and anything that's sort of like a big entry level scheme uh, for the BBC across the UK. Um, I also partner with uh, colleagues across the whole business. So uh, that from our editorial schemes, which include production and journalism, uh, as well as our technology teams, which include opportunities in sort of systems and software, user experience, design. Um, and we also uh, work with our business colleagues as well. Um, and one of uh, our wonderful apprentices in our business areas, uh, Navia helped to create some of the slides for, for today's session, and she's one of our digital marketing apprentices. Um, so there's a really broad range of opportunities on offer um, at the BBC that uh, myself and, and my wonderful team look after. Um, so I wanted to spend today's session uh, telling you a little bit uh, about what sort of me and my team um, have learned over the last few years uh, in supporting people with sort of CVs and application forms. Um, but one of the uh, really important things um, that I'd like to share is sort of why me? Why am I the, uh, the expert on this topic? Why are you stuck with me for the next hour or so? Because um, I think when you get to write your own intro and your own sort of blurb for a any kind of webinar and any, any session, it's always uh, great to be able to talk uh, about yourself a little bit and why, why you are the expert in this stuff. Um, the fact is that I think uh, everybody's got a very different take on CVs and application forms, but for me, um, I've spent the last 10 years working and specializing in entry-level recruitment, um, working across lots of different industries from the aerospace sector, supporting Rolls-Royce, uh, engineering consultancies, businesses like Atkins, uh, I've worked in the water industry with Seven Trent Water uh, and I now work here across the media sector with the BBC. Um, across those 10 years or so, um, I've worked in numerous roles from, from being the person that uh, has been the person that's sort of going out and doing all the attraction activities, standing in front of you, uh, wearing the t-shirts and talking about these different businesses and why you should work somewhere. Um, I've gone and done all of the sort of attraction and selection activities, so the bits that when you apply uh, to a position and you complete uh, an application form, who does it go to? Is it a computer or is it a person? Um, I've been behind thousands upon thousands of applications uh, for the first steps of people entering an organization and doing that screening and filtering, um, but also running and delivering assessment centers, both from a design perspective um, in sort of what kind of things are we going to ask? How are we going to ask them? What kind of the sessions are we going to run? working with managers, working with uh, different organizations um, to design uh, the materials, um, and being the person at the front of the event that talks about why you should work somewhere. Um, a huge amount of what I've done over the last few years is, is to stand in front of uh, big groups of people and tell them to work at different organizations. And uh, I'm under no illusion that I'm the person that's paid to tell you um, that places are brilliant places to work and and and, for, and here at the BBC you know I'm the guy um, that's paid to tell you what a fantastic place it is to work but it really really is um, after doing something uh, for nearly 10 years you really have to uh, put yourself behind what you're talking about and really mean it um, and it's a career choice that I've been really really proud of uh, as I get to help thousands of people um, with their careers and, and entering hopefully their their dream career and, and something they want to do. Um, so that's where this session has come from. Um, obviously, it's very difficult to, to sort of put yourself in as an expert, but I want to sort of talk to you a little bit about who I was and why, why you had me for today's session. Um, what we've got to uh, go through actually in this session um, is a mixture of different things, really. I wanted to focus not just on CVs as part of this, but application forms as well. Um, the guide that we're going to be talking about and what I'm going to be talking about today should be relevant to pretty much any sector in any industry. So I'm hoping there's lots of transferable information for everybody today. Um, but equally, um, I wanted to sort of talk about a few different things as well. So before I kick off the CV Masterclass session, I did want to tell you a little bit more about this week's event as a whole, um, because I don't know about you guys, but I've spent lots of time looking at plenty of these sessions this week. Um, a real highlight for me was the 
um, is it possible to be disabled and work in television session, um, which was run and I really enjoyed it. So um, there's lots of sessions organised by the Royal Television Society Midlands this week. Um, and across the four days of this event, you're going to be seeing six hours of live stream sessions and masterclasses and workshops each day. Um, I do have to say the big thank you to the sponsor, the National Film and Television School, for le a leading global institution who've developed some of Britain's and the world's top creative talent. Um, so thank you to those guys as well. Um, and if you want to find out more about the rest of the sessions this week, there's still plenty to sign up for um, and catch up on anything that you've missed. Um, so do check out the, R uh, the RTS website, rts.org.uk, to find out more about the sessions. Now you're stuck with me for a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about CVs, application forms and everything in between. Uh, I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about some of my recruitment stories, things that I've come across uh, through the thousands and thousands of applications I've talked about that, that hopefully we'll share um, with uh, you guys in this session. Um, I'll also try and take it slow and steady. Um, CVs and application forms and particularly with, with a number of people I know uh, that have invested their time in this session today. Um, I want to, to spend a bit of time on each part of this and not try and uh, talk too quickly um, through each of these parts. Um, I will be keeping an eye on the chat as we go through. So if there are any questions, um, the guys at uh, the Centre RTS are helping me uh, sort of moderate some of these questions and, and try and get back to you. And I'll do my very, very best um, to answer anything that's relevant as we go through, but I'll try and make sure there's plenty of time for us to chat um, in the chat box at the end if there are questions that people have through the session. So uh, what do I know about CVs and application forms and how can I share that with you? So um, today's session uh, we're going to be covering um, sort of how to prepare for you know producing that CV or application form and, um, and what to put into them. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the rules. Um, when I talk about rules, it's sort of what should everything, what are the very, very uh, key things that everybody tells you about CVs and application forms, the, you know, sort of robustness that sort of sits behind that. Um, it might sound a little bit uh, sort of simple, but we're definitely going to go back over the basics. Um, if you look at many application forms, it's it's often... Uh, not the special things that people miss out, but it's the very, very simple things, the basic things um, that we forget to do um, because we're really keen to, to get on with the application, particularly if we're completing multiple applications at once, which is, uh, you know, very, very common um, and trying to get those things through as well. So the basics are going to be a key part um, of this session. Um, and I'm going to sort of share with you uh, my team's tips uh, and, and myself as, as to, to what is uh, better than the average. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that the team who uh, work with me are, are going to enjoy today's session as well, because they've uh, really uh, helped pull this together for me as well. Um, and you'll see our hashtags here. So uh, if you want to find out more about some of the stuff that we do, um, check out us on social media. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that for you at the end as part of our questions too. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to cover um, is the differences between, you know, CVs and application forms, what kinds of things uh, are uh, CVs asking for, how does that fit into application forms, and, and what are you likely to come across when you apply to any kind of role, really, and whether that be here in, in uh, the television and media industry, right the way through to, to various different sectors, and, and as I mentioned, you know, we cover uh, a huge variety of jobs here at the BBC um, that all sort of follow the same kind of rules um, and I imagine for any kind of employer you'd be looking for um, there's some stuff in here that uh, should support you. So CVs, curriculum vitae, the course of life in Latin. Um, these documents are super common, in fact the most common type of document to summarise your skills, experience, education, um, and those uh, well-crafted CVs really do show your interests, highlight your relevant skills and work experiences. And it's a way that employers really understand. The reason that CVs uh, sort of exist and what we use them for is it's a very simple way for all employers to have a sort of a standardized uh, kind of expectation of what to, to send in when you're looking for an opportunity. Um, but when we talk about standardization, we also know that 
um, no CVs are the same. Um, and we're going to talk about that in this session and sort of how CVs may uh, all sort of talk about sort of how they're crafted and what they can show. Um, but we all know that everybody's CV is very different from each other's. Um, and I'm also going to focus uh, these tips on application forms, because do you know what, um, especially over the last few years, um, the amount of times that as a recruiter, I actually look through a CV has become less and less. In fact, we look at CVs um, as sort of an additional document in lots of application processes. It's something that you may upload uh, as part of an application, um, but application forms have become uh, a really structured way for employers to standardize all applications. Because we know CVs often come in in different formats, people follow different templates, people decide to include or exclude bits of information that we might need. Um, application forms have become increasingly popular. Um, as a recruiter, it really does help us standardize what we're looking for. If you wanna find a specific part of information and answer to a question why you've applied for a job, um, an application form allows us to do that in a way that CVs just don't. You know, somebody might describe uh, the reason they've applied for their job in their opening statement in their CV. They might have a, a sort of uh, a profile about themselves. They might add a covering letter. You might talk about it through your job descriptions and why you'd be right for the job through there. So application forms allow us to sort of wade through that a little bit. Um, and we also can then start to ask things more specific to our position, our job, um, that we might miss from looking at a CV. Um, but also application forms form a huge part of what you would put on a CV too. Contact information, education information, employment history, work experience, qualifications, um, all of that stuff comes through in application forms. And you may find that you sort of gone, oh, I've spent all of this time making sure my CV's up to date. Um, and then you input all of the similar information back into a, an application form. Um, but the reason we do that is so we know we've got the most up to date information from you. Sometimes people upload CVs without the right stuff on it and uh, they haven't updated their contact details for a while. Um, so these application forms are sort of like another way for us to, to make sure we can get in touch with you. Um, but equally, as I said, we can ask those questions at this stage that are related to this job. Um, that's what applications forms really give us as a recruiter um, that's over and above what we can get from, from just your CV. So what are the rules? Um, I've kind of alluded to this a little bit already. Um, I don't know whether every recruiter would agree with me, but that's kind of the point here. Um, in my opinion, there's no hard and fast rules for writing CVs or completing application forms. Um, no matter how perfect you think your uh, CV could be, um, there's always somebody there that would recommend you do things in a different way, put things in a different order, highlight skills, take skills off, follow my template, download this template, explore uh, the careers uh, websites of, of numerous providers and, and you'll find uh, template upon template for uh, specialist graduate CVs, experienced CVs, you know, your very first CV, they'll all be slightly different and they'll all recommend something slightly different for you to do. Um, so I wanted to sort of say, look, you know, uh, the overall aim of, of these documents, the overall aim of any application process is to market yourself, those skills that you have to those employers and convince them that they're the candidate they want to call for an interview and assessment centre. The person uh, at the other end of, of the thing that you're, you're sending in, your CV, your application form, um, usually has a very short window to make a decision on who that person is, uh, what we're finding out about them, and whether we're going to take you through to the next stage. Application processes uh, for recruiters are, are quite critical because we have to look at uh, lots of people all at the same time. We have to try and make judgments about what those candidates can bring um, and, you know, whether we can produce uh, the quality of people that we need to, to get to those interviews to find that right person. Um, so this is really important. And uh, whatever method and whatever template and whatever thing you do, that market yourself um, is the really important piece here. Um, so I said to focus on the fact that the CV is yours. 
you're using it to represent yourself in the best way that you can. Um, and that's really at the heart and the real, you know, if I was looking at any kind of advice and rules, it's make sure that whatever you are putting down really represents what you want it to say. Um, and the very simple basics, uh, 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 the next slide, really, I wanted to talk about the, the basics, you know, what you must, must include, um, no matter what. Um, it might sound a little bit simple to come back to this stuff, but there's countless times I've looked at an application and gone, I really want to talk to this person. I really want to find out a little bit more about them, or they've included something that I wanted to ask more about, or I wanted to pick their phone up to, or wanted to email them and invite them to an interview. Their contact details have been out of date. They've sent me an incorrect CV. They've changed their phone number. Um, they have changed their email address. People have had a big push to to professionalise their their email contact details. And uh, you know, I think there's been some fantastic stuff that that companies have done. And and uh, you know, Barclays did some adverts a few years ago about uh, email addresses with the Barclays Life Skills, and you know, really started to highlight to people how important contact details can be as part of application processes, and uh, how to make sure you've got professional and, and really clear ways to communicate with you. But the key thing really is that that stuff needs to be, uh, you know, relevant, and it needs to have something that you know you look at regularly, particularly with phone numbers. We all uh, often uh, like to change and, and be uh, with the latest phone and your number might change quite regularly. When you're applying for a job, really important to know that you can get in touch with somebody. Email addresses also, um, email addresses uh, are things that we need to check. Uh, they're things that, you know, often recruitment emails go into junk mailboxes quite a lot. Uh, I know me and my team at the BBC, I can hear my team in my ears talking to me going, you know, because we send stuff from recruitment systems uh, and databases and those kinds of things, lots of people's personal email addresses recognize that as a marketing mailer or as they recognize it as, um, you know, something that, that could be junk mail um, where actually it could be the invite to your interview. Um, so email addresses and the way that email and contact stuff works is, is really quite important. Um, the other thing um, to recognize with, with contact details um, is that it can be quite important for us to, to make sure that if we apply to lots of different jobs and those kinds of things, that if we update things in between, that we know what version of the documents we're using, particularly ac across all of these categories, actually. Um, my advice for the education side of things, the basics on here, um, dated, listed, and for me, the most recent highest up the page. Um, it can be really valuable to include your grades. Not everybody does. And in fact, depending on where you are in your career, um, the amount of grades that you include, uh, how often you include them, um, sort of changes. Um, I know if I was looking at my own CV now, um, after working in uh, recruitment for the last 10 years or so, I wouldn't recommend uh, putting all of my GCSE subjects, all of my grades, all of that stuff in because um, it's just not uh, relevant to where my career is right now you know the stuff that I talk about is my um, recruitment and, and marketing uh, sort of specific uh, experiences and, and qualifications and, and memberships um, I talk about you know sort of my degree I'm actually a, a sociologist uh, ended up in HR um, with a you know dissertation that I did on uh, people and their, their emotional labor at work actually so you know I, put, I include some of that information about my education but um, it depends on what's relevant at the time um, and I think it's absolutely okay to to make sure that your education and the stuff you're including and uh, the subjects and the grades are all relevant to to the job you're applying for and it's okay to change it as your career develops and you move forward skills um, skills are great I mean I actually don't think that sometimes people forget to include their skills if it doesn't line up directly with their education. Things such as second, third languages, IT training, skills from extracurricular activities, um, things in the skills box again should be career specific or job specific but um, having a second language is a really good one um, as it could be something that uh, actually for, for an organisation really stands out and you can bring something that, that somebody else may not. Um, work experience. Now, uh, again, not everybody has work experience. They're not essential things to include on entry-level CVs. 
Um, but if you have it, it's definitely worth including. Internships, voluntary roles, uh, previous jobs, most uh, recent first, talk about the dates, talk about what you've done um, and the things that you've gained and the transferable skills within any kind of job. Um, and references. Now, references is something I wanted to include on here. I don't think uh, every application process asks for them at the start. Some do, some don't. Um, and not all application processes will, will come to referencing and, and sort of vetting and stuff um, in the same way. Completely different depending on where you work, the industry you're working in. Um, but I think with references, what I wanted to, to refer to really is having at least two people you can call upon, people that you are connected with currently, people that you talk to regularly, um, and people that, you know, when they get that request through to talk about you, they know who you are, they are connected to you, and they have some investment in, in your journey and your career and the things that you want to do. Um, I think often references can be um, left to, to a point where uh, if you work in organisations that they can only give standard information, which is fine. Um, but if you've got those advocates of you and people that want to support you and people that uh, you can call upon to, to, to share with you, it's a really lovely thing to, to maintain. And regardless of whether it's uh, relevant to the, this particular application process or not, having those connections and that network and, and networking is so valuable um, to career development. Um, so that is, you know, my my very, you know, entry level basics, everything that everybody should include on any application process for anything. Um, but that session is not about that. You know, this session is to how to be, you know, different. How do you stand out? How do we stand out in the world with, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of applications? How do I stand out and, and not just make sure you're getting the basics right? Um, but structuring something so you can utilize your CV or something out of your application form to make you stand out from the rest. As I said, there's a lot of these application processes which have a person sat behind them. Uh, in our case, there's a, a whole team of people that, that really invest a lot of time in, in reading what, what people put down and, and uh, to stand out to those people. Um, to be better than your average um, over the last few years um, and with my current team um, we've got seven tips that we wanted to talk through things that people can utilize um, no matter what the sector no matter whether you're looking to apply for a position uh, in television as a journalist or on radio or whether you're looking to join us in a technical capacity as a, a software engineer or, or coming to join us in user experience or audiences or marketing you know these tips are valuable uh, across the piece, uh, at least in, in my opinion. And uh, I wanted to sort of say, well, what, what more can you do? You know, we've talked about the, the things that everybody should do. Uh, so tip one, the really uh, clear thing for me that stands out as a recruiter is if somebody has focused their application to the job they've applied for. Um, it stands out immediately. Um, if somebody has spent the extra time to uh, talk about the industry they're applying for, to talk about your company, to talk about the opportunity, to pull things out of the job advert, you know, some of the key phrases and descriptions and experiences that, that you know, we've spent writing these descriptions and, and putting them out into the world for people to read. Um, when you can start to reflect that back and you can start to hear it in somebody's responses, it stands out. It does stand out. Um, and all the information you need to help focus your message is out there. You know, it exists. It's in the world um, with companies having extensive social media channels, uh, with websites, with videos. Uh, you know, lots of companies have some fantastic podcasts uh, that you can listen to. Um, you've got wonderful uh, cohorts of people, graduates, apprentices. Uh, employees that have pulled uh, their own content together that you can explore online, find out what these people really do. Um, as well as those job adverts, job adverts sometimes might feel like a little bit of a, uh, a daunting thing to sort of go through. In fact, lots of people look at job adverts and go, I'm not sure, I, you know, I might only be two thirds of this opportunity or, you know, I only sort of got half of the things that this is talking about. Um, but that's fine, you know, we're not expecting people to have the 
every everything on this list you know we're looking for people to draw out what they have and what they can bring and where they can develop um, and that's all in the descriptions that jobs that you should be you should be looking at and take to your advantage um, by pulling on those threads of information by looking at what's out there um, it really allows you to focus a message in an application or a cv in a way that uh, lots of people don't and, and in a way that people haven't really thought about uh, before. Um, so focusing message is huge um, and as a recruiter definitely the first thing I would look for. Now layout and style, I talked about this already really which is that there are hundreds upon hundreds of templates that you could use for this. Uh, I've seen CVs that have included people's links to digital CVs that have videos included, some people include their photographs, some people include, uh, you know, extra bits of information, portfolios, you know, all sorts of different things in their layout and style. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that in some of our application stories uh, as, I, as I draw this session to a close. Um, so with layout and style, I've sort of tried to simplify this just to go, well, what templates do people, what can I advise people to use? Where can I send people? Um, and the answer is you've got to find something that's right for the industry you're applying for. You've got to find something that's right for the company and um, particularly with application forms, you know, uh, lots of companies have built their application forms specifically for the opportunities they're uh, hiring against. Um, so you can spend ages getting the right layout and style for a CV just for it to be an attachment. Not that you shouldn't spend time on your CV, um, but, layout and style and some of these kinds of things you know with with the way the applications forms work some of it you don't actually have control over now um, where you are designing a cv um, i would say to decide on your layout and your style be consistent with the use of headings you know uh, application forms and cvs that where people use different fonts or different headings or you know uh, use one date format for one kind of description for education and then use a different type of dating for employment. Um, you may not notice it straight away, um, but it's something that having a friend or a family member or somebody, a mentor look through and just sort of pick out some of these things can really, really help you. Um, for CVs specifically, um, there are so many ways to organize them. I mean, I've given you um, in my basics, some of the things that I would say and, and to put things most relevant towards the top, to date things in, in sort of most recent first, but you know, you're going to get different advice from different people. I don't want to sort of muddy the water any further with what you should do and what you shouldn't do with how it should be laid out. Um, so the best piece of advice I can give you is check any of the guidelines the employer you're going for has provided and carefully ensure you're submitting your details correctly. You know, those basics, go back to the basics, make sure you're including all of that stuff and commit to a style, commit to a layout, commit to a font, commit to the colour um, and just stick with it because you know the the more random the more piecemeal the more bold and color and all these things sometimes actually makes it very difficult for us to read you know this isn't something we're printing out it's something we're having to uh, look at on a screen very very quickly and we want it to be screen read you know screen readable we want it to be something we can we can uh, engage with and, and sort of pull, pull pull the information we need out of quite quickly Filling in the gaps. Now, this is something um, over many years I've talked about with lots and lots of different recruiters. Um, in fact, the very first time this came up to me, I was working in a recruitment agency um, and we were looking for temporary workers to work on construction sites. And we had a very quick turnaround um, of time and we were looking for people quite quickly. And the best, the best piece of advice I had with this is if somebody's got a gap in an application form, why is that there? It's not because it's not there for a legitimate reason or it might even be something amazing like you traveled the world or you know you were doing still in education or, or you were doing something else um but as a recruiter um the recruiter that taught me this uh said that gaps in cv sowed a seed of doubt in their mind what was that person doing it's an unexplained piece of time um and it seems to have gone uh, to a point where you know, why is that uh, gap there? And, it, and I think that seed of doubt, especially when there's hundreds of applications available, 
doesn't mean that you can always include everything you do, but if there are opportunities to talk about extended breaks in education, um, bits of work experience, travel, other things that might include um, it to your experience into this kind of document, great. Um, I can see some questions coming through now as well. So um, I'm going to start to have a little look at some of these questions as we go. Um, but I'll go, I'll go through the rest of the seven tips, but I'll definitely come back with some really great stuff in here um, as well. So this, this sort of gaps and sort of filling in other things and things that add to your experiences, I would definitely recommend. Um, this bit I've called uh, show off a little bit. Um, I say a little bit because CVs, application forms, is a place you should definitely be showing off. Um, it's something that is the moment where you get to talk about yourself and why you should be right for this job that you've applied for or whatever it is. Um, it's a place where lots of people use general statements. Uh, I am an enthusiastic, energetic, committed individual. Um, and you go through and you go, right, but what have they said to me? What has come through? What has, what has that person told me? And the answer is probably not quite a lot and not as much as you would like probably um you know i've put add some value you know this is this is a point where um you can talk about yourself what you've done any experiences you've had what just passion you have for the industry it doesn't have to just be i am an enthusiastic individual what makes you so enthused by it what is it is it the you know the experience the the tops and things in there um and and i think that you know, when you use the word like enthusiastic, back it up with why it make, why are you so enthusiastic about it? If you're committed to the sector, what makes you committed? How do you show that? Um, you know, write about what you want to do as a career and why. Focus uh, on uh, answering, as if you were answering sometimes, you know, the application from why have you started to work here? Um, and make sure you acknowledge your own achievement. Um, so many people talk about we uh, and use we statements as part of uh, their application processes. Um, people talk about, you know, we worked and developed this particular idea. We launched this. We've done that. If you've done something and you've done something amazing, say that you've done it. Um, this is a, a tip for not just application forms and CVs, but interviews, uh, assessment centres, where it's you and where you've got something to add. Don't be afraid to do that show off a little bit. Um, so some really good stuff in here too. And, and thank you for the continued questions. I'm definitely uh, really excited to see the engagement on here. And I'm, I'm really keen to get into those with you as well. Um, so this show off a little bit is, is really important to me. And I really like it when somebody talks about themselves and, and gives me a little insight into themselves that, that you don't normally get at uh, a standard CV or application form. Um, however, you can show off a little too much, I think. Um, I've read application forms where, you know, somebody has told, that, told me I'm missing out on the next Brunel. And you know what? They might be. They might be the next Brunel with, it, with an engineering career. Um, but when it comes through in an application form, it, you've got to bear in mind how it, how it comes through. Um, so I've always put this show off, but show off a little bit, um, but in the right way. Um, take your time. Um, take your time is up there with one of the best pieces of advice I could give anybody applying to a job. Um, it sometimes feels like uh, an application process is going on forever or you see an application, you go, I need to get that in at the last, you know, I've, I've got to get that off tonight. I've got to do this stuff. And, and sometimes you can't avoid it. You know, sometimes you cannot avoid the fact that you see a job application, it's due in at midnight that night and you've got to pull everything together and get it in. And, and, and you know, we all, we've all, uh, potentially felt that emotion where you thought I really want it but I, I don't know if I've given myself enough time. Um, a really good way to do this is um, setting up job alerts um, if particularly with companies that you want to work at particularly with things like uh, big job aggregators like Indeed or other other job aggregators um, that you might might uh, use. Um, so when those jobs come up you see them early and give yourself enough time to produce an application and talk about um, you know yourself properly without having to do it at that you know in before midnight and um, the other thing i would say is if you're ever in that situation um i've had people reach out to me as a recruiter and go oh my goodness i've seen this job at the very last minute um i have put something in to show my interest um but i really wish i'd had more time does it always work absolutely not 
<laughs> but if somebody got in touch with me as a recruiter and said they were interested in my job and I could see that they really wanted to uh, work here and they had some experience, would I give them some time? Yeah, you know, why wouldn't I? You know, somebody's spent them some time on trying to apply and get something in, and of course I would. Um, some recruiters might say no. Some recruiters might say you've missed the boat, but, you know, you don't know sometimes until you've got in touch with that team looking after that job and uh, reaching out to that person that, you know, we're here with the other side of the application forms. We want the best people. Um, so I'd say don't be hasty in sending off applications. Um, you know, spend some time uh, to, to look at the different stages of an application, you know. Could it just be a CV and submit? Yes. Is it most likely to be that? No, not really. Um, I think the times of just sending a CV off to a HR email address and hoping that you get a reply, um, you know, it exists, but it isn't quite the journey that, that lots of companies are on now. Um, and I think, you know, there are different stages. One of those may be a CV, but they could well be different stages of an application form. Um, so take advantage of those opportunities to save your progress, have a look at what you're asking for. Will there be other questions? Will there be other stages? You know, take that time and make sure you're confident um, in what you're putting in. Um, and again, tailoring every application, that going back to tip one, that focus your application may seem like a time consuming thing to do. Um, because it is, you know, spending time to uh, look at every application and trying to make it relevant to the specific job and company and all of that stuff is it time consuming absolutely um, but copy and paste uh although a hugely valuable tool um isn't something i'd be tempted to encourage uh, as part of an application process people make mistakes people may be applying to a very similar job and leave the other name of the other employer in there should recruiters judge you for stuff like that no we've all been there we've all made some of these mistakes um but when you're a recruiter and you've got moments of decisions to make uh people to talk to and people to book in for interviews could it be a mistake that you can avoid yeah could it be something that you know, means that you go from being uh, a candidate that sort of seems super passionate about a job to somebody that has pasted in a very similar answer to another company? Yeah. Um, employers want you to apply for the job they have, not just any job. By taking that little bit of extra time, showing you have really made that effort to understand the requirement, you know, it's, it's something that I couldn't advise more is to, is to take that bit of extra time and really see what, what the, you're being asked of. Because, you know, is it fair to ask people all this stuff? And, you know, we ask a lot, you know, spend some time, get it right. Um, check and check again. <laughs> Tip six. Um, again, recruiters are very uh, good at, at this kind of stuff. And I don't want to, to put a negative uh, view of recruiters and how they view applications, particularly around spelling, particularly around uh, grammar. I think the world that we live in today is a very different world um, with regards to application forms and CVs and, and the recognition for uh, things such as neurodiversity, dyslexia and all those things is absolutely really super important. Um, here at the BBC, we've done tons of work um, around uh, understanding our applicants, understanding how people we can make our processes better um, and really engage uh, people to, you know, apply in a different way and, and different things. Um, I've been kept this tip in um, in spite of all of that, really, because I also think like a recruiter. I've worked in this sector for a long time. Um, and uh, again, you know, we have decisions to make about applications and, and other things. Uh, and I think it'd be a little bit naive of me to, to sort of say um, the mistakes that people make in their application forms uh, are things that we don't notice because we do. Um, and if you can avoid mistakes, if you can reach out to your recruiter and say, actually, is there a different way I can apply? Um, you know, uh, can I, can, I've uh, got um, some additional time. Can I take some additional time? I uh, maybe dyslexic and you, you know those kinds of things you don't have to tell us any of that stuff um, but recruiters we really want to help everybody that applies we want that best person um, and if we know and we can support people it's a really great thing to do but equally you know first impressions do count um, spelling and grammar have been 
things uh, across my career, not here at the BBC, but across my career um, that people pull out, people see, people notice. Um, there are many forms that don't let you go back and make corrections. So if you click submit, you know, that can be it. Uh, and you can notice it afterwards. Um, and it's really frustrating when you do that. Um, so I think have a look at stuff um, before you move on to the next question. Some application processes, you can actually um, copy and paste your things into a word processor like Word um, and uh, spell check things beforehand. Some of these application systems that have spell checkers in them, which is amazing. Um, and as I say, it shouldn't be the be all and end all as to whether your application is accepted or not. But if it's something you can check and something that, that you can uh, help uh, as part of your application, I wanted to, to recommend it. Um, I also said, you know, to check that you've appropriately targeted for the role that you've submitted against and you haven't left any blanks. Um, not all of the uh, forms you complete or not everything that you will do um, will go through and, and, and submit. And... Uh, Unless the recruiter has put on a, you know, a must complete, sometimes you can leave something blank and, and we don't have anything to go on. Um, a really good recruiter will phone you up and go, oh, by the way, um, you've left something blank. Can we help fill you this in? Um, are all, recruiting, all recruiters really good? No, um, they're not. And, and they, sometimes that blank um, can leave a space that um, could be the difference. So check you haven't left anything blank and attachments, ensure your CV is attached, ensure that cover letter is attached if they've asked for it. If you've got references and they're requesting them, make sure they're correctly attached, make sure it's that person's right contact details, right email address, whatever it is. Um, the check and check again um, really isn't uh, uh, a way of sort of saying, you know, don't apply if you, you know if you think you're gonna make a mistake, but try and avoid, um, you know, some of the things or some of the silly stumble, stumbles that we make um, through through application processes um, that can make a difference, you know they can. And tip seven. Now, tip seven is something uh, that is a self-taught lesson. Um, when you apply for a job online, particularly uh, where there's an advert or a job description um, on the internet, you can read it, you can apply, you can put yourself forward. Once those positions are closed, the job descriptions can be removed. You know, you can forget the job that you've applied to, the description, what it was about, where it was. Um, I would always recommend keeping a record of the job you've applied for, copy the job description, take a screen grab, copy and paste the description, um, take a note of the date you applied, um, the CV that you used for that job, you should have had a focused CV. Keep that to one side. Know what you've talked about. Know what what uh, things you've included about yourself, those experiences. And put them together in a place where when you get that phone call from that recruiter and they go, hi, it's Mark from the BBC. I want to talk to you about the job you've applied for. That you don't feel as on the spot. <laughs> you always sort of, you know, that butterflies in your stomach moment. Um but especially if you're really actively pursuing different opportunities, different companies. Um, and something I really recommend is, you know, uh, if you don't have your eggs in one basket, explore what's out there, see what you can do. Um, but really keep an eye on those adverts and descriptions and things you've applied for. You can also apply for multiple jobs at the same company and they could be run by completely different recruiters. Um, and if you've specialized your application for one or the other, um, you might start rambling on about the slightly different job. And this is a really great tip for me. It really is helpful. Um, those CVs that you specialise, keep them together, keep the dates um, and really know your login details as well, you know, um, especially where there's login details for these websites so you can see your application progress. Keep it all together. Um, you want to know what you've applied for. Um, and the final bit here is, is online presence. You know, there's really fantastic social stuff out there. LinkedIn, is a wonderful tool for, for careers, um, a really great professional network, great for looking for jobs, great for looking uh, at other people you might want to connect with, find out about different jobs. Uh, similarly, companies now have Twitter, Facebook pages, YouTube channels, Instagrams, uh, blogs, uh, you know, podcasts, whatever it is. 
there's so much stuff that you can explore, listen to, see um, from a company perspective. If you see something that, that they're doing that you want to talk about, get it down, keep it. Um, the other bit is the self-reflection. How do you look online? Uh, again, I've done this talk many, many times um, and people go, well, our employers looking at my social media. The answer is no. Um, we don't. We don't explore you as a candidate on social media. We um, any good recruiter wouldn't do that. But um, we also work in a world where we uh, sign up to companies um, policies, social media employee policies and other things, um, both uh, from a content perspective here at the BBC. Um, we are a public service. You know, we are responsible for uh, really highlighting um, the fact that there's that, that, neut that neutrality of the BBC, that impartiality, really important. Um, but actually, this slide's been around for a lot longer than when I've worked here. You know, it's something that if you're online, you have a digital presence, you have something that reflects yourself and how you look. Um, and although it might not be something that plays a part in your application process or part of uh, uh, the process that, that you do at the very start, um, it's still an impression of you. Um, and it's definitely something that I would encourage people to reflect their online version of themselves as a thing that they'd want to talk about to their employer or other things there as well. Um, so that, that's, that's my tips uh, for, from one to seven. Um, what do the BBC look for? Um, I, I want to cover this as well. Um, so for entry level programs, the stuff that me and my team look after, which is work experience, apprenticeships, training ships, placements, uh, for anything that should have got a scheme attached to it, the BBC. We use application forms rather than CVs. Um, you can upload CVs to your profile on our central hub, which is called Careers Hub, and you can create a profile with these kinds of things. And for other jobs at the BBC, CVs are still uh, something that, that the business uses. And I think as people become more experienced and their experiences grow, CVs can be really valuable. Um, but for us and the stuff that my team use, application forms are right there. Application forms, as I said, are the basics, you know, so it's really important for us to get this right. Um, we want to be able to get in touch with you. We want to know why you've applied. We want to know what you're interested in. And we want to, uh, you know, we want you to spend the time uh, to make sure you understand what we're asking of you. We ask you questions. We want to know what you've applied for. And some of our questions have word counts on them. Um, use them to your advantage. You know, if we ask for 300 words, um, it's not a lot. You know, take that account and, and make it really stand out and make it about you. Um, which is right at the center of, of all of the stuff I wanted to talk about is uh, you make it, you know, you make your application. And, and uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Georgia, actually, who looks after um, some of the branding uh, for our careers and say, you know, you make uh, your experience and for the BBC, you make the BBC, it's the person, it's the individual. Um, this is something I've, I wanted to talk about just before I answer your questions. Uh, I'm going to spend sort of, uh, sort of five or 10 minutes on your questions and, and I'll go through and I'll see how much of it I've already answered because um, being on my own, I wanted to try as my best as I could to stay in the flow uh, of the, the session. I've, I've included uh, some images here from a guy called Andy Morris, who's a designer. Um, if you Google um, the Lego figure CV, you'll get um, Andy's uh, sort of blog on this. Um, I'll try and uh, share the link if I can afterwards. Um, but uh, if you Google Andy Morris's CV or the uh, Lego figure CV, it comes up, it's, it's on board Panda, uh, of all things. Um, this is just goes to show really that there's no hard and fast rules. I've, also, I've included it for this no hard and fast rules. Andy works in a very specific industry. Andy is a, a designer. He's somebody that works with uh, specific audiences. He was targeting very specific companies with his experience and, and what he was about. Um, and when Andy created this stuff, and you can read his story, uh, he created something really different. His CV was this Lego figurine, uh, had his contact details on, his personal story, um, and it came in a real box that said, unwrap your next employee. Um, and this is a CV like no other CV I had ever seen. And this is a story I saw online and, and I really, you know, was inspired by Andy's uh, CV and the way he approached things. 
I guess I also included it because not everybody should be sending out Lego figurines of themselves to employers to try and get them to recruit them. Andy did this because it was a really clear uh, way to target specific people he knew uh, or people in an industry that he was really working on and, and it really stood out for him as a designer. Uh, I would be absolutely mind boggled. We had something like 22,000 applications for early careers at BBC this year. If I got 20,000 pieces of Lego uh, through the post, it's definitely not the way to apply for what we do. But it just goes to show that by focusing your message, by reading what companies are about, what they're for, um, creating something different, listening to the industry that you're working in and lots of other things, there's some really great things that you can do and uh, some really important ways that to, in a different way to Andy that you can stand out. Um, I was talking to my team about this and I was talking to uh, our digital marketing apprentice, uh, Navi, about it. Um, and she said she'd seen some examples of people that had had sort of like a treasure hunt CV, which would have had their recruiter going to find different pieces of information from an online portfolio and other things. Sounds amazing. Um, in reality, the time that it would take somebody to explore that stuff, you'd have to be really sure that it was something that was right for that sector and right for that industry and the recruitment team or the manager you sent on this quest for your CV was going to be right. Not all ideas are great. Doesn't mean it's a bad idea for that particular sector if it's going to work. But again, something that um, I would definitely um, be very uh, careful about, you know, trying to do something weird like that and different and unusual. Uh, again, not necessarily a bad idea. Um, but equally, we've talked a lot about talking about yourself. I think the biggest thing uh, around application stories that stand out for me is where people talk about themselves. They tell me who they are. They tell me why they want to do this career or who they are and what they want to do in that show off a little bit stage are some of the best applications I've ever read. Um, there are countless applications that uh, come across your desk and you go, yes, they're a good candidate. They've been to the right school they've they've got the right kind of degree they've got the right kind of experience they have gone and done a piece of work experience but their candidate hasn't stood out they haven't told me anything that isn't the same as the previous 10 people you know particularly in early careers we talk about uh competencies a lot and we talk about you know give me an example of a time where you've done something and people talk about that um but it doesn't give me an idea of their strengths. It doesn't tell me anything about who they are or how they approach things or what it's about. Um, so if there's an opportunity in any application process, in that personal statement on your CV, in a cover letter, to talk a little bit, to talk about you, I really rate that. that that's something that as an individual recruiter talking to you on a, an hour long session um, that stands out, talking about yourself stands out. Um, so that's that's application stories and something I wanted to share. Um, and like I say, uh, it's uh, the Lego figure CV, Andy Morris, it's on Board Panda. Check this story out. It's really cool. I really recommend it. Um, and now I just wanted to give you just a very high level look at what the application process is here at the BBC. Um, just to goes to show really that it's not all about CVs or application forms. In fact, for us, it's five stages generally. Um, you register, you create this careers hub account, you give us the basics, you tell us who you are, you create a login so you can come in and out, save your progress, that kind of stuff. We talk about your profile, your personal statement, where you can upload things like your CV, other things, bits of information about you. Um, we talk about equal opportunities questionnaires. These are completely anonymous. We don't get to see this stuff. This isn't attached to your account, but um, allows us at the BBC to see if we're doing a good job or not. You know, aren't we encouraging the, uh, a, a broad range of people to apply? Um, all companies uh, worth their salt should be trying to reflect the the broadness of the of the organisation that they that they represent. You know, whether that be the UK as a whole, whether that be worldwide, whoever. You know, equal opportunities as something that as part of application processes are really common. Uh, and anonymized and, and I'd encourage people to to talk about you know their experiences in those those things because it's not connected to, to you um, but allows companies to tell if we're doing a good job um, the questionnaires now this is the bit that, that sort of takes over the CV really I guess this is the bit where we ask the question like why you've applied for this position can you 
uh, talk a little bit about your background um, or whatever that is. That questionnaire is set up against the job. In this case, it was the production apprenticeship scheme. Um, and and it will be written by the recruiter that looks after it. And, you know, they're the answers that we're looking for and making our decisions on, right? Um, and then there's that moment where you get to check everything, you know, that check and check again before you can affirm and submit that application. Because once it's in, yes, you can log into your account, check it's in there, but, you know, you've put a bit of time into it, you know, it's not something you've done quickly, it's a, uh, a moment you've done. Um, so that's it from me on that. I wanted to give some time for these questions. I'm going to open that up next and, and sort of have a read through and see how I can answer these. Um, but if you want to find out more about my team, what we do, how we share our information about careers at the BBC, um, we are at BBC Get In, and that's the, the schemes team. Um, we have a fab Instagram and Twitter feed. Um, if you follow the hashtags you make the BBC or hashtags make the moments that matter, you'll start to see some more information uh, on that stuff as well. Um, but I'm going to start to uh, open up uh, the chat a little bit here and I'll go through and see how many of these questions I've answered. I hope I've answered a few um, as we've gone through. Um, and I really appreciate you bearing with me uh, on these questions um, as we go through. Um, so uh, I'd like to thank you all for these and we'll, we'll, give, it, we'll give it a good go in these five minutes. Um, so Eric asked me uh, at the start of the chat, you know, references, is it acceptable to say available on request? Um, Eric, it's something that I've thought about quite a lot. Um, I think it depends on the company that you're applying for and the process that they have. Um, some companies ask you for references as part of setting up this online account um, as something you can go to and, and something to put in. Um, those stages sometimes have a compulsory element to them, so you can't move on. You can't continue to register your account without putting this stuff in. Um, do I uh, think it's uh, okay to say available on requests? Uh, yes, I do. I personally think it's okay because when you uh, end up getting a job and the referencing process happens, um, you want to make sure that the people that are your references, again, you've connected with them, you've talked to them, you you may have told them what you've applied for and, and supporting you. So um, personally, I think upon request is okay. But again, some processes require you to do that up front. Um, so it's worth sort of connecting with your references uh, early on. I know if you're in a job already and your reference is going to be your current company, that's not always possible. And again, I think that's where upon request and upon, uh, you know, sort of offer and things uh, can come through. Um, but again, have a chat with a recruiter that looks after the job. If you're not sure, drop them an email um, and let them know, particularly if it's a, a current employee, uh, a current employer that you, what you say, actually, I don't want to tell them until I know if I'm successful or not. Um, Sil, thank you for your question. You've asked about soft skills as well as hard skills on your CV, time management, communication, teamwork, uh, include with a specific example. Um, I guess that comes back to my skills bit, um, things like languages and things like that I mentioned as well. But yeah, I think if you've done uh, some really great stuff around time management, communication, um, and you've got some examples you can include, you've got to bear in mind, particularly if it's a CV, um, not to completely uh, bombard the person that's going to be reading it with too much. Um, CVs, are, people will say, should they be a one page or a two page or three pages? Um, they've got to be right for the job. Uh, a one pager could be perfect, um, but if it takes two or it takes two and a bit and it's the right thing for that job, yeah. But um, I would include soft skills, I think, but as part of the job, uh, when I talk about my job and what I've done. Um, so if I'm talking about leading my team, I'd probably talk about teamwork in there and what I've done. Um, hopefully that's helpful there for you still. Um, Sarah has asked me about career changing later in life. Um, she's talked about education and varied work experiences um, and talk about CVs, length, CV lengths, um, keeping things concise. Um, again, Sarah, similar to what I've just advised uh, uh, in that question before, um, I think including um, bits of information um, that are relevant to each job, you can help adjust the CV for each thing. Um, and where you've got sort of grades and stuff, take them in and take them out as you see fit. Um, but equally, have a real look and have somebody look through with you, um, your CV, and see if you get, if, if they had never worked with you before, what can they find out about you on that CV? And it doesn't need to be that long to tell a great story. Um, but having that extra person to review it with you and check is, is a really great piece of advice. Uh, Karen's asked about redundancy and gaps to redundancy. Um, again, I think. Uh, where redundancy gaps have happened 
sometimes it, it can be important to include stuff like that. I think as a recruiter, does it help me sort of work out where, where somebody's been? It can be, uh, all recruiters are different things that, you know, things that they'd advise. And there's lots of advice to say, don't, you don't have to tell people why you've moved jobs. You don't, you don't have to tell people why you've finished a job or moved on, um, and things. Um, but things like redundancy, again, sometimes it's better to have a, a call about that with a recruiter later, depending on the kind of job you're going for. Um, and, and the process you're going through. If it's like loads of applications in for, for a job, um, can it be something that you mention in your uh, CV? It could be, it could be. Um, probably not that helpful, Karen, but I hope it uh, at least looks at your question a little bit. I've got two minutes, I'm gonna be fast. Uh, ben, uh, do you know if work experience will still happen in the summer? Um, at the moment, uh, BBC work experience isn't uh, happening and we're gonna review that, uh, we're always reviewing that. Um, we sort of postponed it till April 2021 right now. As you can see, I'm still at home myself and I have been since the 16th of March. Um, so I'm not quite sure uh, when we're going to be able to bring people back in. Um, but we know it's valuable. And, and, and as soon as we can bring things like that back forwards, I'm sure we will. Uh, in the meantime, I'm hoping there's going to be some stuff we can share online. But we will sort of announce that as, as we go. Uh, should we acknowledge gaps of pandemics or shouldn't we? I mean, we're right in there at the moment. I know it's anonymous. Uh, I think there's lots of people that will probably be like, yeah, there's a gap, you know, there's a pandemic, there's furlough, there's lots of other things. Um, I, I think sort of take it as it comes um, with that piece of advice uh, on there. Um, but uh, I think we're, we're all very much aware of, of the current, current world. And if there are things that, you know, that have impacted you, um, it's part of, part of the story that, that's relevant, then it might be worth including. Is it best to write in the first or third person? I like people talking about themselves. I like people to say, I would do this. I've been involved in this. And to talk about your third person can be a bit strange. Thanks, Eric. Um, and who to address it to, sir, madam, other. Um, I think, again, it is something that um, you will go to. There's other things here. I don't think I'm going to have time to answer. Uh, I know uh, the RTS has said to me that the sessions uh, do run uh, quite closely together. And I don't want to overrun uh, into the next session. Um, but again, for the BBC as a whole, our application processes will be open as soon as we can. I think we're probably looking towards the start of next year, if I'm honest with you at the moment, as to when things for early careers will begin. Um, so do bear with us um, and those kinds of things as well. Lots of our application processes are for 18 plus. Um, so there's not always things for, for 16 year olds, but it doesn't mean there isn't any. Um, but again, uh, as a bit of a, a catch all here, it's uh, uh, for 18 plus. Um, I think that that is my time for today's session uh, and I really hope it's valuable uh, to everybody who has uh, been going. Um, I think I might have some additional time, I'm just going to check with the, the RTS guys, I think it says I'm, I'm happy to keep, to, to keep going uh, potentially on here. So I've got a couple more minutes to answer a few more of these questions. Uh, I'll, I'll wait until I'm told to, to shut up actually. Um, how would you go, uh, so Lee asks, how would you go about requesting feedback for a role you've been turned down for? Great, great question. Um, so I think requesting feedback is something that um, if you've been working with a recruiter, um, it's something you can ask them about directly. Uh, I know in the later stages of our process, particularly for uh, interviews and assessment centers, you'll know you will have a contact normally to, to talk to about feedback. Um, if it's sort of a general application, unfortunately um, not, all feedback is possible for everybody. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we have thousands of applications sometimes at, at, at an entry level role um, and we can't give personalized feedback for everybody. Um, but if you think there's something you'd want to find out or you want to ask them, uh, I would say, um, you know, if, if there's an opportunity to request feedback, uh, I would give it a try. Uh, and if you don't quite get what you want, it, you know, recruiters do, do try. We really, really do want to help people. Um, but it's not always possible. Hopefully that's helpful. Lee. Thank you uh, to the guys at the RTS. I don't think there's another session on the back so I can answer your questions, which I'm really grateful for. Thank you guys. Um, so I've got a question from Charlotte um, who's hoping to apply for um, apprenticeships um, and when applications are going to go live. Um, as I mentioned, Charlotte, I think we'll probably be looking into the new year um, before our early careers schemes go live. So probably January. Um, that's what I'm estimating at the moment. Um, in the meantime, you'll start to see some stuff from me and my team uh, on our Instagram pages, on our Twitter pages. We'll start to build up a little bit about 
what's going to be coming, what's coming live. Uh, we'll try and share some of that in advance, but I think at the moment, uh, January is my best sort of push is to say when to start, when, when I think things will start to be uh, looking for applications. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, Ellie's asked about exper gaining experiences in broadcasting, um, but then has interest in production. Um, wants to apply for a similar kind of thing in production. Uh, um, you know, about her experiences in broadcasting and presenting. I think um, production is a really interesting uh, sector here at, at the BBC. It's something uh, uh, that is hugely popular uh, and we receive lots of applications in. There are likely to be schemes that come around for production for 2021. Um, I haven't seen what they're going to look like just yet. I think they'll be slightly different to what we've done before. Um, but not in a hugely dramatic kind of, oh my goodness, it's totally different. Um, but I think um, having those broadcasting experiences, having uh, presenting experiences and other things, it all feeds into that picture of you as a person. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in production, uh, it gives a bit of a flavour to yourself and your story when you apply. Um, another question here about specific CVs that have stood out to you. Can you still make your CV stand out with no previous experience? Um, I'll answer the second question first. Yes, um, you can make your CV stand out if you've got no previous experience. Um, I think uh, it's great, you know, when I talked about uh, applications, say I'm an enthusiastic, excited individual, that kind of stuff. Um, those kinds of things come through really often, but it's when that person with, you know, you don't have to have had those experiences, starts to talk about themselves. Why are you interested in the industry? Why would you like to do this stuff? Um, it doesn't have to be professionally experienced that you talk about. You could talk about hobbies. You could talk about uh your background and what sort of led you to to explore this sector um i really like hearing about people's personal uh projects that they've done or something they've created and those kinds of things doesn't mean that i can click through to every portfolio and check out everybody's pieces of work and um, but do i like hearing about somebody's passion and hearing about what they've done and some of the things that they've done that maybe doesn't link to any specific experience uh, yeah i like it i think you can stand out doing that uh do we have specific instances where people stand out yeah um for good and bad reasons um i've had people write into the bbc this year talking about things that they don't particularly like about the bbc things about uh you know things that they would like to change at the bbc you know things that are quite critical and have gone wow okay you know um this cv stands out and not in a bad way i think you know there's some good points in here i think there's some things that are interesting i think this person stands out um, I've worked in the engineering sector where people have gone, do you really want to be the person that's missed out on the next Brunel? I've mentioned that earlier. Uh, you know, you're going to, you'd really regret not hiring me. And I've gone, well, you know, I'm not sure about that. But, you know, it's definitely stood out to me. I've, I can regale it, you know, sort of eight, nine years after reading it later. Um, so it stood out. Um, but I think there's pros and cons to standing out in, you know, <laughs> in different ways. Um, but make sure it represents you. That's what I would say. Um, around around all of that um so i think I've, I've answered all the questions um that had come through um i really hope that the session has been valuable i really encourage you to 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 follow a little bit more uh stuff online follow the, the the opportunities that you're interested in if it is the bbc follow us on our social channels uh, and our hashtags um, and if it's other parts of the media industry other industries in general uh, i really hope there's a transferable a uh, piece of information or, or many pieces of information in here uh, that, will, will, that will link through and, and support you in your uh, next step on the, on the career ladder. So thank you for all of your participation. Thank you for listening to my uh, experience over, over the last sort of hour and a bit. And uh, uh, do remember to follow the rest of the RTS sessions this week for, for other bits of uh, amazing information that, that might help you out. Um, so thanks everybody. I really appreciate it.